in this video, I'll teach you how to create a custom duration variance view in Microsoft Project. You know duration variance is important, right? If you had a task that was supposed to take five days, but it actually ended up taking eight days, that's three days of duration variance. You'd want to know that, right? In this video, I'll teach you how to create your own custom duration variance view so you can easily track and analyze duration variance. So let's get started. Before I teach you how to create the custom view, let's take a look at the elements that are included in a view in Microsoft Project. To do this, I'll click the Gantt chart pick list button and choose the more views item on the menu. Let's take a look at the elements that comprise the Gantt chart view. So I'll leave that view selected in the dialog and click the Edit button. In the View Definition dialog, we can see that a view consists of a screen, which is the information that we see on the right side of the view, a table, which is the set of columns we see displayed on the left side of the view, a group, which organizes rows into groups with similar attributes or characteristics, and a filter, which displays only the rows that you want to see. As we create this new custom view, I will want a tracking Gantt screen, a custom table, a custom filter, but we'll leave the default group at no group. The first step in creating a custom view is to create a custom table that includes the columns you want to display in the custom view. To do this, right mouse click on the Select All button and choose the More Tables item on the menu. In the More Tables dialog, there's two ways to create a custom table. The hard way is to click the button called New and then completely fill in all of the information in the Table Definition dialog. Believe me, that's way too much work. The easy way to create a new custom table is to make a copy of a table that is close to what you want, and then to modify the copy. That's what we're going to do. By the way, the work table is very closely related to the custom table I want to create. So I'm going to make a copy of the work table by selecting it and then clicking the copy button. The first thing you need to do when you create a custom table is to give it a name. I'll call it underscore duration. The underscore indicates this is a new custom table. Also, I'll need to select the Show in Menu checkbox. What we're going to do here is replace each work-related field with its corresponding duration-related field. So I'm going to replace work with duration. And I'll replace baseline work with baseline duration. I'll replace work variance with duration variance. I'll replace actual work with actual duration. I'll replace remaining work with remaining duration. There it is. And then finally, as we scroll down, I'll replace percent work complete with its duration based counterpart, which is percent complete. The other thing I want to do is to remove these titles or labels in the column headers. 
If you want to do this, a word of warning, do not use the delete key on your computer keyboard because that'll delete the entire row. Instead, select the title value and press the backspace key. So I'm backspacing out these titles. And now they're gone. And when we do that, Microsoft Project will display the real name of the field in its column header in the table. After creating the custom table, just the way I did, click the OK button, and now you'll want to test the new table to make sure it looks right. So select your new table if you need to, and then click the Apply button. When I drag the split bar over to the right, we can see all of the columns in the table. If you need to widen any of the columns, you can go ahead and do that. I'd say a few of these I'd like to make a little bit wider. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. Now, in this custom table, I can tell you the most important column is right here, the duration variance column. See how it's in the middle of the column list? I think I'd like to move it just to the right of the task name column. So to do this, I'll click its column header one time to select the entire column. When the mouse pointer arrow turns into the four-headed arrow, that means I can click and hold in the column header to grab it. I can drag it to the left, and when the insertion point is just to the right of task name, I'll release my mouse button and that puts the column just to the right of task name. Now while we're at it, there's actually one other column I'd like to include in this table. I can actually do that right now. It's the indicators column. I'd really like to be able to see that to know if there's notes that are included with any task. So here's how to include an extra column. Right click in the task name column header and choose Insert Column on the shortcut menu. And then I'll just type the letters IND, and that'll bring up Indicators. And then I'll go ahead and just best fit the column. I might make it just a little bit wider. There we go. So at this point, I would say that the custom table looks exactly the way I would want it to appear. So at this point, step one, it's done. After creating the table, the next step is to create a custom filter. To do this, click the View tab to display the View ribbon. Then click the Filter Pick List button and choose More Filters on the menu. In the More Filters dialog, click the button called New to display the Filter Definition dialog. In the Name field, enter a name for the custom filter. In my case, I'm entering the name Duration Variance greater than zero days, again prefixed with the underscore character to indicate it's a new custom filter. What I want this filter to do is to show me any task where the Duration Variance value is greater than zero days, which means the duration is taking longer than planned. Leave the Show in Menu checkbox selected, and then build the filter like this. Field name, that's going to be Duration Variance. The test is going to be Is Greater Than, and the value is 0. If we want to see the summary tasks that go with the regular tasks that are going long, we can also select the checkbox Show Related Summary Rows. When finished, click the Save button. And then, of course, you're going to want to test this new filter. So in the More Filters dialog, select the new custom filter and click the Apply button. When you click the Apply button, this will show you every task where the duration is taking longer than planned. So if we look in the Duration Variance column, I can see every task that so far 
the duration has taken longer than originally planned. I would say that step two is a success. Step three is to create the new view with each of the elements I want included in that view. Before I create the view, however, let's go ahead and set everything back to its original defaults. So I'm going to clear that custom filter. I'll also reset the table back to the default entry table. And then I'll also drag the split bar back to the right edge of the duration column. To create the new view, all I need to do is to click on any view pick list button, such as the Gantt chart button and the view ribbon, and then choose the item More Views. In the More Views dialog, I have two options for creating the new view. One would be to click the New button and create everything manually. The other way, however, is to copy an existing view and then modify the copy. I like to do that a lot of the time. Since I want a tracking Gantt, Gantt chart over on the right side, I'm going to copy the tracking Gantt view. And then I'll click the button called Copy. In the View Definition dialog, in the Name field, enter the name you want used with this custom view. I'm going to call it Duration Variance, again prefaced with the underscore character to indicate that it is a custom view. The screen that is listed in this dialog says Gantt Chart, but it's actually the tracking Gantt version of the default Gantt Chart view. Now here we go, let's start choosing the elements we want. The table, underscore duration. I don't need a custom group, so we'll leave no group selected. The filter, I want to be our new custom, duration variance greater than zero days. And then here's the other option. I'd like to display the filter in this view as a highlight filter so that every task whose duration is going long will be formatted with the yellow cell background color. This view will display every task but highlight with yellow the tasks where the duration is going long. So when I finish, I'll click the OK button. And now it's time to take a look at the new custom view. When I click the Apply button, here we go. Every task that is formatted with the yellow cell background color is a task whose duration is taking longer than originally planned. So as we scroll through, when you see detailed tasks that are taking longer, you know that that duration exceeded its original baseline duration. For example, task number 20, develop functional prototype. Look, the duration variance is four days. That means that task is currently taking or has taken four days longer than originally planned. So there you have it. Those are the steps needed to create this custom duration variance view. There you have it. That's how to create a custom duration variance view. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If so, please give it a like, and I trust you'll share it with your friends and colleagues. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I hope you'll subscribe and click the notifications button. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.